pregnancy lengths are normally distributed with a mean of 280 days and a standard deviation of 20 days. Nine months is approximately 273.6 days. What is the pregnancy length corresponding to the shortest 1% of pregnancies? So notice that it says normally distributed, so we're working with the bell curve, but then it goes on to ask us what is the pregnancy length. It doesn't say what's the probability, it says what's the pregnancy length. So this indicates to us that it's not the probability question that we have to work out, but rather a scenario where we're trying to find a value from the bell curve that corresponds to a certain percentage, in this case the shortest 1%. So let's do our drawing here to help us uh, figure out what we have to enter in our calculator. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw my bell curve. I'm going to label the mean and the standard deviation they gave us in the problem. So they had said that the mean was 280 days and they said that the standard deviation was 20 days. So that's the information they provided us in the problem. Now on this axis down here I'm going to label the information they gave us in the problem. So Let's again put the mean in the center, 280. This X represents a pregnancy length. And they say basically what's the shortest, what's the, the pregnancy length that corresponds to the shortest 1% of pregnancies. Now if you think about over on this end, this would be the longest 1%, right? Because these would be the pregnancies that are longer than average, they're more than 280 days. So the shortest length then would be over here somewhere, right? This would be the shortest 1%. So there's 1% of the population of women in this tail here, and what we want to do is figure out what pregnancy length cuts that off from the rest of the other 99% of pregnancies that are longer. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use the inverse norm feature in our calculator. So press second in your calculator, then the button VARS. So second, then VARS. Then you're going to take option number three, and in that option is going to be called inverse norm. And then from there you have to give it some values. So what we want to do is give it the percentile. The percentile means from this line you drew on your curve, what percent is below that? What percent of the curve is below that point? Well it turns out here that that's P1 or the first percentile, right? So I'm going to enter that as a decimal in my calculator as 0 0.01 to represent the 1% that's behind that location. And then from there it's just a matter of putting the mean and the standard deviation they gave us. So that's 280 and 20. So again, this is the percentile as a decimal, right? Then it's the mean, and then it's the standard deviation. Hit enter, and that'll give you the results. All right, so let's check it out in our calculator, see what it comes up with. So we're gonna press second, then the VARS key. Once we do that, we're gonna take option three. Then we have option three, it says inverse norm. We're going to enter the 0.01 then the comma, then we're going to enter the mean, which is 280, comma, the standard deviation, which is 20. Close it up, press enter, and we find the result, 233.5, basically. 233.5.